Hi, my name is Linda Ortiz and this is my video lab report for Lab 3, Black Hole Orbit. The objective of this lab is to analyze the motion of a star that is orbiting a black hole of unknown mass. While finding the mass of the black hole is important, it is the steps that I take to get there that I want you to take note of. I will use observational data of a star along with a fundamental principle, Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation, within a computational model to calculate an unknown, which in this case will be the mass of the black hole. At the end of this lab, I will find the mass of the black hole to be 4.378 times 10 to the positive 31 kilograms. Since we are assuming that the net force is due to a single force, the gravitational pull of an unseen object, the black hole, we have our fundamental principle, Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation, where the force of gravity is due to the constant g multiplied to the masses of two subjects divided by the distance squared. m1 will be the mass of the star, and m2 will be the mass of the black hole. During this lab, we will also learn how to decompose the net force into its separate components of a parallel force and a perpendicular force component. The parallel force determines speeding up and slowing down and will always run parallel with the velocity and the motion of the object, while the perpendicular expresses a change in direction and will run inwards towards the, towards the center of the kissing circles. Steps for the lab are as follows. We will first identify the system, which is a star near the black hole. We will then use the observations to find the net force on the visible star. After that, we will specify interactions, which in this case would be the gravitational force of the black hole on the visible star. And finally, we'll be able to solve for the unknown, the mass of the black hole. Our observational data is as follows. The mass of the star is 2.7497 times 10 to the positive 27 kilograms. The time step is 86,400 seconds, and the position of the black hole is 1.00 times 10 to the 10, um, negative 2 times 10 to the 10, and 0. We take this data into a computational model that will help us determine the net force acting upon the visible star. Now we can use our observational data to find the net force. With data points, we are able to define the initial and final velocities, along with the initial and final momentums. After that, we take the momentum to solve for dp over dt, delta p over delta t, or in other words, the change in momentum over the change in time. dp over dt helps us to de decompose the net force along with the aid of some calculus. Using the product rule, we were able to break dp over dt down to dp over dt times p hat, which correlates with our parallel component and dp over dt times the magnitude of p, which would be our perpendicular component. Together, the parallel and perpendicular components will add up to the total net force, which will help us get one step closer to solving for our unknown, the mass of the black hole. Now that the net force has been found, we can solve for our unknown. We rearrange Newton's law of universal gravitation to do just that. We place the rearranged fundamental principle into our computational model, and the model then prints, or in other words, calculates the mass of the black hole. Here is the simulation that is generated from my computational model. You will see the orbit of the star around an unseen black hole. The three arrows that you see represents particular forces. The blue arrow is a perpendicular component of the net force that points inwards into the kissing circle. The black arrow is a parallel component of the net force that points in the direction of the velocity and motion of the star. Finally, the yellow arrow is in the direction of the net force. This all corresponds correctly, for if you add the perpendicular and parallel component vectors, you will have a vector that points in the direction of the net force. Now onward to answering what does it mean. What is, what is the difference between the net force and dp over dt, let alone their parallel and perpendicular components? Well, the net force is the interaction and dp over dt, the change of momentum over the change of time, is the effect of that interaction. The net force is the overarching idea, while dp over dt includes the thoughts that summed up to become that overarching idea. To be more specific, there is no way for them to be exactly the same, but they have different units. dp over dt has units of kilograms times meters per second, while newtons of the net force are equal to kilograms times meters per second squared. And to answer the what if, if we were to remove the present black hole and replace it with a new one of different mass, we would never be able to tell the difference. It would be impossible to change the mass if we have the same positions. The whole basis of this lab was about process. An important part of our process here was determining the net force acting upon the star. And in order to do this, we had to use observed data points from the star. These data points led us to velocity and momentum and dp over dt until the net force. If we never change these points, then everything in the future remains the same. This concludes my lab 3 video report. Thanks for watching.